Hello. Um, this is Sunday, April 2nd, and I think it's about 9 o'clock at night. It is right at exactly 9 o'clock. Uh, and I wanted to do a little bit of a podcast about it being Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday, if you remember, is when, when this is, I didn't do a, you know, an in-depth Bible reading, but it is when, I know from my previous study, that Jesus entered into the town and they were putting the palms down and he rode in on a donkey, which was supposed to show humility. But there was another event that happened, and I'm not right, quite clear without doing in, in-depth thinking about it, um, but he was at the house of a Pharisee for dinner. And if you go to Luke chapter 7, verse 36, um, it says here, beginning in 36, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went down into the Pharisee's house, and he sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. And when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this is something he thought in his own mind, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus, answering, you remember this was not said out loud, this is something it says in the Bible, that the Pharisee thought in his mind. Um, I'm going to repeat verse 39. Now, when the Pharisee, which had hit, bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman sits in this that toucheth him, for he is a sinner. And I use the King James Version. Um, I think this will turn out right when I, when I do it. But anyway, the King James Version, that's what it says. And so the next verse, verse 40 says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. Let me stop it at verse 40 there for just a second. According to verse 39, the Pharisee thought that thought, didn't say it out loud. But Jesus knew what he was thinking. Does that surprise you? It doesn't surprise me. Um, and so... Going on to verse 41, this is Jesus speaking. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. So tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Let me stop it. That's the end of verse 43. The more you have to be forgiven of, uh, the more you might respond with love. I mean, that, that's that's pretty a universal um, tenet of psychology and human uh, being, okay? Uh, but he turned to the woman. This is verse 44 now. He turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? Okay, I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. I'm going to stop there. That's the end of verse 44. It was custom back at that time for the, the someone to wash the feet of the guests that were in a uh, fairly well-to-do home. So according to this, Jesus is saying and pointing at Simon and saying, the Pharisee, you did not even wash my feet. She has washed my feet with her tears. She has dried them with her hair. She's kissed them and she's anointed them with oil. So I'm going to read on to verse 45 now. They gave us me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou dost not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. That's verse 46. Let me think about that a minute. 
sometimes um, the guest would have uh, an expensive perfume type oil that might be offered to him or her. And when he said on his head, I think if I remember correctly, that had something to do with um, anointing the hair of a person that's coming in as a sign of honor. You know, I see a lot of parallels between this and my Cherokee heritage. Well, let me say not really Cherokee, but Native American because I've studied things from all over different tribes. Uh, but anyway, verse 47, he says, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth a little. And he said unto her, Jesus said unto the woman, thy sins are forgiven. And they said it meet with him, began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. So this is, um, I believe this happened after he came into the, the city on the uh, back of a donkey on Palm Fronds. And it being Palm Sunday, that was a celebration of him coming into um, into the city a uh, week before what would be Resurrection Sunday. And so we think that when this anointing of his feet happened, that perhaps it was a thing where... Um, she was preparing him for death. We really don't know if that's something she thought might happen. Uh, I don't know. But uh, it's interesting. I'm going to do another podcast using the children's Bible and talk about, um, how, from that perspective, how she might have been thinking about this. So when we think about foot washing and things like that, I've only actually been a part of one foot washing uh exposure, whatever you want to call it. And it was really a part of the, the discipleship program at Mount Olivet. I think it was a year four. And it was near the end of us finishing the four-year program. And it was quite an interesting thing. And um, there's nothing weird about it, really. I mean, foot washing was a thing back in the time of Jesus. And, you know, it, honestly... You know, living on an island, living here at the beach, uh, I can remember times where we washed our feet before we came into the house growing up as a kid. I do now. When I go to the beach, uh, and usually it's a sound beach, but I come back and I rinse off my feet uh, because various reasons. There's sand plus the salt, different things like that. And so does my mom. So it's really not that weird to think about people washing their feet when they come into a house, uh, especially back in those times in, in the Mideast, um, they would have definitely done that from the sand and heat and the muck and stuff like that. Okay, I hope that you've enjoyed your Palm Sunday. I know this is not the, the you know, the Palm Sunday entrance typical verse, but I think the anointing of the oil for Jesus was, I've always felt like that was in preparation for his crucifixion, which in in our, in our the way we uh sell that's not the right word but celebrate it is going to be happening very soon last supper would be monday th thursday i believe um and then resurrection sunday easter is what we we call it and just so you know i just was on the, the phone with a good good friend of mine that lives out in uh, utah and i was remembering back to when my daughter took me on this wonderful trip it had to do with her uh, law school thing at the BYU campus and we ended up making a big long trip out of it which was wonderful but on that uh, trip we were there for Easter Sunday and we were staying in a yurt in a desert and I saw the sun rise over the desert that Easter and that was a treat in itself uh, here on the island we usually have a sunrise service on the waterfront and uh you know, and in times past, I've been down there at 6, 7 a.m. whenever they do it. It's always very cold, and right now, it's very cold on the island. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, reading, and I hope that uh, you'll think about how you can be very humble in what you do, and perhaps when you give something that's valuable that costs you something, 
and you give it with freedom, then maybe that is where we all need to head. Thank you. Hope you have a good evening. Bye.